House impeachment managers wrapping up their final arguments in the case against former President Trump. This comes as we get reports that Democrats are focus grouping, excuse me, focus group testing their message during the impeachment trial. Watch what, watch what they had to say today. Inside and outside government begged him to condemn extreme elements, promoting violence, and indeed civil war in America and race war in America. He just wouldn't do it. He intended the events of January 6th to happen. And when it did, he delighted in it. These insurrectionists, incited by President Trump, threatened our national security. And former President Trump's lawyers are set to deliver their defense tomorrow. They are giving us a preview on how they are prepared to push back against Democrats' charges. Watch here. Why do we ignore the word peacefully? Why do we ignore the context in, in which the word fight is used during the course of it to, um, to cheer on legislators to have courage and that sort of thing? This is what you get uh, when you have, when you bring in a movie company and hire a large law firm to make a professional product that takes things out of context and presents it as an entertainment package. And Republican senators continuing to say that the math isn't there for a conviction. Watch this. I think most Republicans found the presentation by the House managers offensive and absurd. Really what the aim is, I think, is to humiliate President Trump, to discredit his policies, and to shame the 74 million people who voted for him into conformity. I think what we're watching is a total kangaroo court. It's totally unconstitutional, and it is incredibly selfish. All right, Juan, why don't you kick us off today on day three of this trial? Well, I'm, I'm listening carefully because I'm anticipating, you know, what the Trump team will have to say in response tomorrow. Um, but so far, Dana, all I'm hearing is spin. I mean, they don't, you know, seem to me to have the facts on their side. They can't pound the table because they haven't been at the table yet. They'll get their chance tomorrow. So I think what they're doing is spinning. They're talking about things like, why did they have a focus group? Gee, is it unusual for lawyers and politicians to have focus groups? No. They talk about, you know, uh, well, President Trump once said the word peacefully. Oh, but what about the months in which he was saying, you know, let's, let's gather at the Capitol and inciting people beyond the, the pale? I want to hear the facts. The case is built on what we heard today from Jamie Raskin quoting Thomas Paine is common sense and hard facts. The videos that we've seen over the last two days, uh, the statements from President Trump, even the fact that a number of his own aides and officials uh, resigned in protest over his failure to, qu to, to quash what was the violence that they saw taking place. So I think, you know, after the last two days or so, we can say, is it three days, you know, that uh, it's still likely the president will be acquitted, but it's because people choose to ignore a solid wall of evidence you know, sky high that's been built to say that this is a high crime and misdemeanor of the worst kind, attack on the government. Uh, and so some people put their feet up on the table and pretend like, ah, that wall's not there. I got other things to do. But All right. I think they made a really good case. How, how about you, Dagan? Good to see you today. Uh, well, <laughs> good to see you. Well, there are 44 senators who think this trial is unconstitutional. Uh, to get a conviction, you need 11 more Republicans to vote. Good luck with that. Not going to happen. But um, you focus group something when you're selling a product to hone your pitch. And what the Democrats are selling is hatred of all things Trump. That's not just the man, you know, the orange ogre who is blamed for all evils emanating from Washington and around the world. Uh, the boogeyman that the left hid behind for more than four years to hide their fecklessness and uh, their incompetence and their disdain for working men and women. It, the evil that they're selling is Trump voters, 74 million Americans. They are no longer just deplorable rubes and bigots bitterly clinging to their guns and Bibles. In the left-wing universe that you've heard in the last two days, those Trump voters are the Capitol Hill rioters, all of them. They're QAnon devotees, they're proud boys and girls to be silenced, shamed, persecuted, destroyed, Democrats in control forever. That's the goal. And now you have big tech, big media and academia locking arms with the Democrats in government and the left is closer than ever to complete dominance. That's the goal. That's what they're pitching. 
Greg, I can see you. I can think. I think you're writing some notes. And if we were at the table, I would steal a glance to find out what those notes were. But maybe you'll share them with us here. I was drawing a unicorn. Oh, Dana. How did no, turn actually, out? Show us. I just wrote that Wand proved why this was a failure. He had mentioned that Trump indeed said peaceful, patriotic protest, and then part of the wall of evidence, this incredible solid wall of evidence. All you could come up with was. Go to the Capitol. Yes, he said, go to the Capitol. It protests peacefully. So that's why it failed, because it's purely political and subjective. This is literally a show trial, and it puts the show in trial. It is like, a, it, it is designed because they lack the actual factual evidence of incitement because it's subjective and, you, and, and there's no way to prove it objectively. They exploit the imagery in order to make you feel a certain way, right? It's agitprop, it's propaganda. And then when you challenge the evidence, as what uh, as, as Juan implied yesterday and today, it's because, you know, you can't be bothered. You really don't care. You don't care as much as they do. No, we actually understand, and we have stated repeatedly, that we found the events reprehensible, as we also found the events over the summer to be reprehensible. We don't favor one mob over the other. But whenever you question the media narrative, something happens. You do not engage in debate. You demonize. So if you question the media on police brutality by presenting alternative actual data, then you are defending police brutality. You see, if you question the computer modeling of climate change, then they say you want to ruin the environment. If you argue against the minimum wage, you hate the poor. Yeah. So this whole thing is in line with the media and the Democrats coming together to de demonize you, but they failed because they chose the incitement argument, which can be completely rejected because it's so the bar is so low in their lame brains that you can apply it to everybody and anybody. If you go tell a comedian break a leg, you know what? You broke the law there, buddy. And we can and we and you can find thousands, thousands of examples over the summer of incendiary language using their judgment. The only difference is they use a different standard with leftists. But we're going to change that now. We're going to change that. We have to. We're going to hold them to the same standards they're holding Republicans, conservatives, and libertarians, and Trump. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was just thinking back to who was it that, was, that added libertarians the other day? In that thing? <laughs> Krugman? I and the libertarians, it too. It yeah. was Brennan. Oh, Brennan. Brennan. Yeah. <laughs> and the libertarians, don't forget them. Hey, Maybe Jesse, I, you're, you're not taking notes, but I have a feeling you got all your notes right up here. Share your thoughts. I have a few. Um, and, you know, if, if the president had actually committed incitement under criminal law, and Juan would have been repeating that word that he said for the last month. There is no evidence, criminally, that he incited anything, or we would have heard about it every single day. What's going on right now on the Senate floor, the Democrats have created a torture chamber for Republicans, and they're inflicting as much pain and suffering as possible, and the viewers on CNN and MSNBC are delighting in it because they're basically burning Trump alive at the stake for the sins of a few people on the fringe and just trying to decapitate the heirs to his legacy. So when any Republican runs, if they vote to acquit, They'll just run an ad tying them to a mob, and if they vote to convict, they'll get primaried. That's what's going on here. The story's about political parties policing their fringes. Republicans do that. After this happened, unequivocally condemned by every single elected Republican in the country and the grassroots. They want everybody locked up. See, we want our fringe in jail. The Democrats bailed out their fringe and they had their friendly DAs drop charges of the fringe. You know, the Republican Party after the 6 didn't go out and say what happened on the Capitol was a myth. You know, they didn't get their buddies to drop charges. They didn't say, who says that protests have to be peaceful? No. You know, Republicans were ashamed of what happened, and they wanted to go away as quickly as possible, and they helped lock these guys up. So when I hear Democrats that don't have any principles that are just dripping in hypocrisy, wagging their finger at us after they greased their fringe and caused all that death and destruction this summer. I'm not going to take you seriously because Republicans didn't hold Bernie Sanders accountable when his follower shot Scalise. You know, we didn't slap charges on the squad when police precincts were being burned down and David Dorn was being shot dead. 
or Rand Paul got his ribs cracked or the Trump family had ricin sent to their house. You know, we, we weren't going around locking people up when Republican precincts were firebombed and shot and burned. No, we didn't start charging Democrats. What's going on right now is sick. Because if you, like Greg said, disagree that this, oh, maybe wasn't a terror attack, as what CNN said, then all of a sudden the FBI is going to come and you're going to lose your account on Twitter. It makes you think the Democrats feel that you're the actual enemy, considering the fact that they now have spent a half a billion militarizing Washington, D.C. after this. All right. A block secured. Moving on. (laughs)